This is Michelle, and I believe out in the Midwest. Hi, Michelle, out in the Midwest. I'd like to know how the following ideas in the Course of Miracles can be incorporated into everyday living as a pagan. For example, prayer, forgiveness, both of which supposedly add to the veil between us and the Holy Spirit. First of all, the Course in Miracles is not a religion. It is a thought training. The miracle is defined as a shift in awareness from thoughts of fear to thoughts of love. Because okay. really those are the only two emotions we have are love and fear. And fear is not even an emotion, it's an absence of love. Forgiveness is the alchemy that turns one into the other. Usually forgiveness will turn fear in any of its forms into love. Much the same way as if you want to get rid of a shadow, shine a light into it. Now that's universal. And that's why I love The Course in Miracles, because it's really funny. People said, oh, it's Christianity, but Christians don't find it as Christianity, because there are some pretty radical thoughts, truths, in my estimation, in there that are completely contradictory. If anything, it's closer to Buddhism, but it uses um, Christian terminology in very unchristian ways. And that's part of the reason I was attracted to it in the first place, because it sort of deconstructed a lot of the things that I was uh, raised with and I could spend I mean I do spend hours talking about that every Saturday morning from 1030 to 1230 at the Silver Broom we have a course in miracles but as a pagan I think and even particularly as a witch look at it as universal truth you study it you practice it and you understand at the core of it any problem I'm experiencing the answer is forgiveness it doesn't matter the form the content is the same. Whether I'm having a problem with my health, or I'm having a problem with another person, or I'm having a problem with money, forgiveness is the answer. Because forgiveness addresses the mind, and the benefit of forgiveness goes to the forgiver. When someone's attacking you, and there's a lot in the course about attack, a lot about attack, all different kinds of attack, that you can have a smile on your face and be thinking attack thoughts, okay? That what that I'm really is, that. <laughs> it's, it's a projection of your own shit onto other people. So when you forgive another, you're not even really forgiving them. You're forgiving what you've projected onto them, which is in your own mind. And that's invaluable. After having gone through one, two, two and a half witch wars, that is what made me say, okay, enough candles and rusty nails. I've had enough of this. It just perpetuates. I mean, and isn't that the same thing with war? Yes. Of any kind. Of violence. Violence begets more violence. If you don't bring in that element of forgiveness, it has to repeat because you haven't changed the cause. Right. You're just dealing with the effect and cleaning up the effect. Now, by the way, in all the witch wars I was involved in, we won. But that didn't stop the next one from coming. Because nothing well, shifted on the challenge. outside. I had to learn the lesson. To learn the lesson that these people are really aspects of my own mind being mirrored back to me. And I realized that I was attacking myself in very unconscious ways, but these people actually helped bring it up so that I could look at it, so that I could see it, so that I could address it and go, oh, oh, wow, your hatred of me is really my hatred of me. And you were fortunate enough to have that happen. And that's because... And to be able to see that. And that's because I picked up the book, The Disappearance of the Universe. Actually, it was handed to me by a, a, a witch of ours... Uh, and an elder witch of ours in our coven had just handed me the book. She said, you're really going to love this book. And I didn't read it for a week. What a fool. I mean, I should know when an elder hands me a book, read the book. And I recommend Disappearance of the Universe by Gary Renard. It's a wonderful book. And it really opened up The Course in Miracles, which I had already done at that point, read The Course in Miracles, but it made me read it again. And I saw that I am 100% responsible for everything that shows up, not consciously, but there's stuff going on inside the mind. And I think that's really where the craft could be headed is more into psychology because if <laughs> look money spells I got billions of them booty call spells woo I could write them off the top of my head getting laid's never been an issue for me but you know quantity or quality I'm currently dating someone of great quality and it's an amazing relationship but that wasn't well maybe it was the result of a spell initially but what it was really was the result of me cleaning up my energy me getting very, very clear about what I wanted. And I think turning 40, now I'm 41, had a lot to do with that too. And I had learned to be honest with myself and I had learned about respect in a whole different way. And I would learned that relationships are crash courses in forgiveness. So it's not about getting a relationship, 
They're everywhere. You have a relationship with everyone and everything. It's what do I do with that relationship? Do I give it to the ego, which will all be about projection and keeping the pain in place so it just reprojects over and over and over and over and over again? Or do I give it to the higher self, the Holy Spirit, my higher power, my gods, pagans? Really, the only difference there to me is semantics of words. Because to me, the Holy Spirit encompasses the gods, the totems, the angels, all of that stuff, the higher self. So do I give, and that's what I do in this relationship. I give this relationship to the Holy Spirit that it may serve its purposes. I could say, I give this relationship to my gods or I give this relationship to divinity. The words don't matter. It's the intention behind the words. It's the feeling behind the words. And I think that's something that pagans can benefit from, even with money. And they go, let this money serve a higher purpose today. Let me be guided through inspiration of how to spend and invest this money then it must come back to be multiplied because the but I know people who say, Oh god damn, I gotta pay the electric bill again. You know, well that's a nice energy to do that with. What'd you just release there? Instead of going, Oh bless bless the Long Island Power Authority. Because by the way, you've already received the energy. You're just returning energy in money form. And to look at it that way. And then to forgive, you know, it's really important that we understand the connection between guilt and debt that every guilt is a form of debt. Hmm. That... Interesting. Think of somebody that you don't like, that you think is guilty. There's something missing. There's a debt there. Well, cancel their debt. That's what forgiveness does. Because you say, whoa, if I see debt in them, there's debt in me. If I see guilt in them, there's guilt in me. So by erasing it in them, you're erasing it in yourself. Because you're actually always erasing... All forgiveness is self-forgiveness in that way. Because all is one. And look, that doesn't in any way to me discount spell work. Because really, spell work is just a form of communion with the divine. It's saying, here's my preference. Here's what I'd like. But every spell I do, there's for the highest good and harming none. In other words, if this is going to destroy me, oh, I'd rather not. But give me its equivalent. This or something better. I would like, and I would like, honestly, to experience more joy and more love and more life in my life. More life force, more vitality. And I think the Course is go ahead, enjoy your life while you're here, but know why you are here is to perfect yourself. So cast all the spells that you want, but if you don't forgive, you're going to be repeating your lessons over and over and over and over again. I'm polishing myself, sorry. <laughs> you know, it, and again, it comes back to Marianne Williamson to me. She said, I think it's in A Return to Love, that um, and Michelangelo did the David. So make sure I get my artists correct. Yeah. It's yes. Michelangelo. Yes. When he sculpted the David, someone asked, how did you do that? And he said, oh no, God had made the David. My job was to chip away the excess marble. Great phrase. Well, and that's what we do. That's what this process of spirituality is. You're already divine. People say, someday I want to be divine. You already are. You can't not be divine. You can't not be spirit. You're spirit before you matter anyway. It's just that other crap you've picked up along the way. And isn't that just Buddhism in a nutshell? It's not a learning, it's an unlearning. It's not a doing, it's an undoing. And I think if we're really going to put this in a context of the Course in Miracles, you are the Son of God, pure and innocent. All is already forgiven and released, just you haven't caught up to that yet. So the more you forgive others, you are forgiving yourself. And I think without that, that is what blew the glass ceiling off of witchcraft for me was forgiveness. Because I kept smacking my head against that. I was like, what the, maybe it's the wrong candle color. It wasn't until I got that I wasn't really forgiving that I was repeating the same lesson over and over and over again. And then once I began forgiving, that ceiling shattered. And I began seeing things from a much higher altitude. And so my prayers are different now. They're not stuff-oriented prayers. My prayers are prayers of communion. Let me experience the truth of who I am. Let me experience the love of God as both noun and verb. To me, that might very well be at the very core of ancient, ancient, ancient paganism. It wasn't all about the crops coming in. It was about I want to experience a unique, organic connection to the divine.